friends! Welcome to the second installment of Relearning the Basics, a series where we take things that the church has probably taught you but neglected to teach you where in scripture those teachings are established. Last week we looked at sex before marriage, and this week I wanted to look at polygamy slash polyamory. As with any conversation about marriage, let's look at the very first. Adam and Eve's union as seen in Genesis 2 is perfect because it was before the fall. It's considered to be the first example of marriage as seen in the Bible, and if the Bible is true, the very first marriage ever. The very first and perfect marriage made by God was between one man and one woman. And let's look at the conversation that precedes this marriage. This 2.18, God says that it is not good for man to be alone and that he is going to make a helper for Adam. After this, it is stated that God presented each animal that had been created to Adam for him to name each animal and that no helper was found suitable for Adam. After this statement, God makes Eve and Adam's reaction to her is at last bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. The whole passage speaks to a partnership ideal that pretty irrefutably would only work with two people in each marriage. And again, let's bring back that verse from our last video, Genesis 2.24. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. If God designed us with polygamy or polyamory as a viable option for holy relationships, then why is it that the perfect example of marriage in Genesis 2 is described with the visual of two becoming one? How would this oneness, this two becoming one, work with more than two people in a marriage? To me, this is enough to confirm that polygamy and polyamory are not part of God's plan for people in relationships, but I will dive deeper into some scripture that I think solidifies that all the more. Every passage in the Bible that speaks about marriage addresses a husband role and a wife role, but it does not give any wisdom for people in polygamous marriages. And God offers instructions through the New Testament on how to be God-honoring in a number of different situations, even ones that are no longer culturally relevant in most countries. It is how people in indentured servitude can honor God by how they treat their master, and how people master over someone in indentured servitude can honor God in that position of power. Yet polygamy was very culturally relevant in both the Old and New Testament, or at least the function of having one wife and multiple you know, concubines or what have you. The Bible does not give any guidance that I could find of how to honor God in that situation. To me, that says that there is no way to honor God while having a polygamous marriage. Lastly, let's look at the purpose of marriage in the eyes of God. Yes, there are societal reasons for the marriage and family unit, but I'm speaking specifically to what God's spiritual purpose is for marriage in this life. A couple passages in the Bible suggest that the purpose of marriage is to bring both the husband and wife closer to God and closer to each other by teaching them how to love one another as God loves mankind. And I would argue that the parallel between Christ's unity with the church and marriage on earth makes polygamy a little hard to conceive as part of this plan. Ephesians 5 says, Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord because the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of the body. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives are to submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her to make her holy, cleansing her with the washing of water by the word. He did this to present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or anything like that, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands are to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hates his own flesh, but provides it and cares for it, just as Christ does for the church. Marriage serves as a beautiful metaphor that we get to live out here on earth. 
for what Christ accomplished and is one day going to finish. And in this passage, two roles are being represented. The husband is representing Christ, the sacrifice. The wife is representing the church, mankind. This being the metaphor, I don't really see how this accommodates the idea of having multiple spouses. I can imagine somebody making the argument of like, well, you know, there's only one God, but he has multiple churches. So maybe that's why this is the metaphor is so to make it clear that, you know, a man can have multiple wives as God has multiple churches. Even with multiple church bodies, there is still only one church. There is no division after Christ, and this is made clear in Galatians 3. For those of you who were baptized into Christ have been clothed with Christ. There is no Jew or Greek, slave or free, male and female, since you are all one in Christ. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. And part of this is colored by my opinion, but I would say that the kind of sacrificial love that God clearly wants us to experience and to display through marriage in a way to represent himself and his love for the church doesn't really work with polygamy because it's this idea of God sacrificing all of himself and devoting his total faithfulness to this one this one body, his, his gift, his creation, mankind. And though we don't know what God is doing other than what the Bible has laid out for us, the picture of God as depicted in the Bible is one of faithfulness, like he is unrelentingly pursuing only us. And I just don't think that you can represent God's sacrificial love while trying to divide your time and your love among more than one person in a marriage. To me, these passages make it abundantly clear what God's plan is for marriage and how to have the most edifying and God-honoring relationship as possible. I hope this video was helpful. I am praying for each and every one of you. If anyone has any suggestions for the topic of the next video, I would love to hear it. And please watch the first video in the series, which was on the topic of sex before marriage. Bye! My poor little W was hanging up for the last little bit of that and I didn't notice. <laughs>